My goodness, look at you two. There's thousands of fleas on this poor dog. I'm breaking my heart, mate. Right now, there are dogs that need help. Can't stay like that. She's scratching all the time. And there are heroes that are dedicated to saving them. That dog cannot stay in the house. He's certainly a little fighter, this one. Transforming their lives. Let's get the clippers off, please. Without the surgery, she may not make it through this year. It really is going to be a lifesaver for her. Finding them forever homes. Sit. Oh. So you get the dog you need. So. Yep, we needed him. My precious boy. And giving our four-legged best friends a second chance makes it all worthwhile. And to see them like this is just amazing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> they are the dog rescuers. I love my job. <laughs> Here at South Godston Animal Centre, they see their fair share of dogs arriving in very poor condition. But they work incredibly hard to get them on the road to recovery. When Bertie here was first brought in, he was in a terrible way. He was heavily matted and he had bad skin. But you're looking great now, aren't you, pal? Hey? He's also very shy. But as you can see, thanks to the team here, he's completely come out of his shell. And we're spending the day together, aren't we? We're going to start off with a bit of lying about. <laughs> Where should we lie down? Coming up. Let's get him up with a nice little bit of food. <laughs> Inspector Anthony Pulfer has to tread carefully to rescue worried Rotty Sam. All right, buddy. What's this? What's this? Oh, the remarkable recovery of skinny Snoopy, found by a road close to death. It's probably the worst dog I've seen that was actually still alive. Uh, this is Rocco and Inspector Kate Parker rescues one very cute puppy. It was in a cage with two adult dogs, um, and it was getting trampled inside. It's a wet morning in South London. Oh, go away. And Inspector Anthony Pulfer is on his way to rescue two dogs who appear to have been left alone in a house for the past few days. Dogs are a Rottweiler and a Staffy-type dog that are locked in the front bedroom. There's been no person going in and out of the address. And obviously very concerned for whether these animals have got food and water. These dogs are at risk. When I go to dogs that have been abandoned, it must be quite alien to them, really. Being used to someone feeding them, watering them, trying to walk them every day. So ultimately, when that suddenly stops, it really alarms them and they get very anxious and very scared. It's been 48 hours since Anthony left paper seals on the front door to check if anyone's been coming to feed the dogs. If the seals are unbroken, it will be time to call on the police to get them out. It's quite clearly obvious that that has not been broken. You can hear the dog. So they're trapped in this room here. Nobody's been to this front door for two days. It doesn't take rocket science to, to know that two, three, four days that water dog could die. Oh, hi, good morning. My name's Anthony. I'm one of the RSPCA inspectors. Um, I need police assistance, please. Cheers now. Bye. Police support soon arrives. Morning. And they've sent a dog handler to help Anthony. It's working, yeah? <laughs> That's how you break tapes properly, you see? So she definitely ain't come in if she was there yesterday. Oh, please! Inside, Staffy, Lexi and Rottweiler Sam are confined to one room by a baby gate. Chill, chill. Sam appears agitated by the strangers in his home. Pile, innit? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then yeah. staff out. 
when animals are stressed, they, you know, they show their frustration. And so they, they use their bark and they can use their mouth. And it's at the time when you, you're likely you could get bitten. And that's when the sort of the police dog section sometimes come into their own. And, and it really can help sometimes just to get the resolution you need, that dog outside that address and into your van. Yeah. Don't get her. I don't think she is. Yeah. All right, sweetheart. All right, sweetheart. You're just scared, aren't you? Good dog. Come on then. Good dog. Getting Lexi out is relatively easy. She's around eight years old. Hello. Come on then. It's okay. She seems like a friendly little thing. You're keen to get out, aren't you? Let me get sweetheart. Good dog. In you go. Well done. Good dog. Good girl. Good girl. Very timid little passive dog. Very sweet. With Lexi safe, Anthony can turn his attention to Rotty Sam, and he has a plan to gain his trust. Let's get him up a nice little bit of food. Anxious Sam shows increased aggression. It may be difficult to rehome him. What's this? What's this? Sam looks interested. Good boy. And while he's distracted, the police dog handler manages to secure him. Chill, chill, chill. It's okay. Uh, 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 it's okay. Good lad. Definitely need to back up now, guys. All right? Definitely need to back up a bit. Good boy. Dog's on a grasper. He's just scared and stressed. We're going to do it slow time now. It seems Softy Sam's bark is worse than his bite. Good boy. Good boy. Good lad. Are you thirsty? Now, Are you thirsty? Good boy. The poor lad heads straight for the nearest water. That's how desperate he is, isn't it? Good lad. Looks like that rain's come in useful after all. Thirsty boy, mate, isn't he? Good lad. Right, let's go and get you comfortable, buddy. There's just one more hurdle, getting stressed Sam into the kennel. Good lad. Good lad. Good lad. Good boy. Well done. Good lad. Don't worry, Sam. You're safe now, mate. Cool. Well, thank God I got that little roll <laughs> on the edge. We're both moving back. All right, we're on. Cheers. Both dogs will be taken to kennels, where they'll get the care they need and something to eat and drink to. There was no water inside the address. Uh, you know, it was filthy. There's numerous feces and, and urine suggesting quite a few days of being shut in that front room. For now, the poor pair are safe at last. Oh, bless her. She's pleased to be out, I think. Earlier, Inspector Anthony Pulfer rescued two dogs who'd been left confined to one room with no food or water. That's one thirsty dog, I think. They're now at Kennels, where vet Vince Sifri is giving them a checkup. He's starting with Lexi, the friendly eight year old Staffy. Lexi seems in pretty good shape. Okay, let's have a look. Good girl. Until Vince gets to her ears. Okay, she's a bit uncomfortable when I try to go in. She is not happy. I'm gonna try the other one because she's not liking this one too much. Um, this is getting a bit stressed with the ear examination and it seems quite painful, so potentially what we could do is we could take a swab of the ear and uh, this will go to the lab. Good girl. Vince needs to take a sample from inside each of Lexi's ears. No, 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 no,
When Sam was rescued, he displayed anxious behaviour, so he needs to wear a muzzle for the rest of his checkup. And unfortunately, he seems to have a typical rotty problem. I'm just a bit worried with these type of breeds. You know, they tend to develop loads of, of lumps and most of them are bad. It's this one here. It's actually quite soft. So potentially this could be something from a cyst or a fatty lump. Also, um, around the penis, there are some growths. Sam will need to have his lumps and bumps investigated. Hold well on. Good boy. Good oh, it's the best man ever. Yeah, the good boy. The Rotti, I mean, he's an old guy. Uh, of course, with age, they come, they come, it comes a few problems. So true. The teeth, not great, of course. I would suspect that a couple of molars will need to come out. The lumps, realistically, they don't seem very nasty, but at the same time, his age is against him. Rotis are very predisposed to have malignant tumors. Let's hope Sam's test results don't show anything serious. We'll be back with him and Lexi later. As we've just seen, as dogs get older, they can have more health problems. Just like us, really. Sometimes life isn't any easier when you're younger, like the tiny puppy in our next story. Do you want some food? Is it tea time? It's mid-afternoon in Shropshire, and Inspector Kate Parker is returning to check on some dogs. Three weeks ago, she responded to a call about two underweight staffies, one of which had recently had puppies. The owner of the dogs was having quite a hard time, so sort of working with her over the last few weeks, giving her advice on feeding and that sort of thing. When I last spoke to her, she had homes lined up for the puppies, so there were three of them. So hopefully they won't be there when I go around and they will have had new homes. Wherever possible, I give owners advice and the support that they need to improve the conditions and improve the lives of their dogs. Hopefully that advice is followed and that we've instantly improved the animal's welfare. Oh, yeah, you're right. Can I pop in? Thank you very much. Once inside, there's some good news for Kate. The two staffies are both looking better. However, two of the three puppies are still in the house. One is due to be rehomed soon, but the smaller one is a concern. I'm not happy with the state of this little one. What, what I don't understand is why this little one, being the size it is, is in a cage. They're in a little cage where they shouldn't be, and it's, it's not good enough. The owner agrees the conditions aren't ideal for a vulnerable little puppy. Everybody loves puppies, and when we get the opportunity to go and cuddle them and, you know, spend half an hour with them, just giving them a bit of fuss, it's great. Really good perk of the job. Oh, right, you take care. Bye-bye. With the pup signed over, Kate can now get the little fella seen by a vet. Uh, this is Rocco, um, a nine-week-old puppy um, crossbreed. It was in a cage with two adult dogs, um, and it was getting trampled inside. So they're not the best conditions for dogs, let alone a little nine-week-old puppy that can't really fend for itself. As it's a cold day, tiny Rocco needs extra blankets to make sure he's warm enough in the van. Kate's taking him to see vet Richard Morris. So this is Rocco, um, a little nine-week-old pup um, that we've had signed over to us. He's got a weepy eye um, and generally just a bit sort of lethargic compared to the others. OK, so just have a little look at that. So that's the eye that was weeping before. Yeah, OK. 
I'm just going to do a full exam and then we'll just come back to the eye. So just checking his mouth. He's a very young little dog, isn't he? Yeah. So I'm just going to weigh him. It's probably very, really, very big, will it? Do you know if he's had any, uh, any worming at all? I don't Anything think like so, that? no. All right, OK. 0.76. Okay, so, so what's that, 760 grams? Yeah, 760 grams, yeah. Okay. So does lightweight Rocco have any lasting damage to those eyes? There's just a little bit of gunk in the corner of that, but there's no evidence of ulceration. <laughs> These look fine. All right, then. Okay. And are you OK just to make a note of that weight for the record? Yeah, I can certainly do that and let and them know. Then, uh, and then we can just check this putting on weight. Mm -hmm. Before he goes, Rocco's got a parting gift for Richard. Oh, nice one. On the fleece. I think Are you finished now? I might get rid of this smelly fleece. Are you finished now? No, no, that means I want it. It's mine. There we go. You might leave that here. Oh, yeah, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. Come on, then. Oh, yeah, nice new blanket for you. There you go. Right, I'll chuck that in the bin. Thank you. Rocco and his fresh green blanket are now off to a rescue centre, but he'll need one more check-up from Richard before he can be rehomed. He needs some food and I just need to make sure that that eye is OK. He hasn't got any scratches on it. I think it's just uh, it's a possibility of a conjunctivitis. He wasn't in a good place um, and the environment certainly wasn't suitable for him. So, um, yeah, we'll get everybody to home. And with a pup as adorable as Rocco, that shouldn't take long at all. Not all dog rescuers wear a uniform. It was by sheer chance that John, Hazen and Maureen stepped, or rather drove, into the breach and saved a dog's life. We were taking Maureen home and went round a corner and saw this something in the road that other traffic was going round. It was a bitterly cold winter's night in Kent when they found the dog. It was basically coming round the corner, um, right on this bend, and uh, we spotted it just sort of in this, this region here. It just looked like a, a, a large bundle of rags just off the, the, the side of the road, just laying there. And, and of course, I was a bit, wasn't quite sure what it was, so I just pulled over. And... and I said to him, what is that? And she just managed to lift her head up. Always said, it's a little dog. She was just skin and bone, just skin and bone. I said to Hazel, I said, this is not, uh, this hasn't been hit by a car. It's, uh, it's obviously starving. The poor dog needed help, so these good Samaritans sprung into action. When we had her in the car, you could, uh, Maureen had got her hand on there, didn't you? And... Even through the blanket, blanket, I could feel how cold she was. Very upsetting. It's, it's a very emotional thing. The emaciated young lurcher, called Snoopy, was close to death. They rushed her to a vet, who called Inspector Rosie Russon. I definitely think they saved their life. I think Snoopy probably would have been dead within the next hour or two. Um, she was so far gone. It's probably the worst dog I've seen that was actually still alive. To me, she actually looked like a skeleton of a dog. She was absolutely atrocious. At just 10 kilos, Snoopy was heartbreakingly thin. She had no microchip and no one's come forward to claim her. For the past couple of weeks, she's been living at Laybourne Animal Centre, where she's being fed little and often. Supervisor Simon McArdle has been helping with her care. Because she's um, of such a, a small weight, um, and so essentially the body's just been kind of eating away at her muscle mass, um, so it's important that she does get a bit of time to have um, to be off lead, to gradually and you know slowly build up uh, the strength in her muscles again. Get on, then. let's go. Since Snoopy's been at the centre, she's gained just over two kilos, but there's still a way to go. Inspector Rosie Russon has been invited to dinner. Ooh. So she's now on a mixture of dry food and the wet food as well. Um, but we've, got a, we've still got on a diet that's very sensitive food, so it's going to be, going to be quite bland. 
Nothing that's going to potentially upset her stomach at all. No. Well, she knows what this is, doesn't she? Oh, yeah, no, she's always uh, very eager <laughs> for, for feeding time. She knows what's coming. What's that? What is it? Oh, your dinner. Is that your dinner? Okay, then. There's Where you go, I say she's a little piglet, isn't she? Yeah, no, yeah, she has to eat a lot of food. You say that again? Good girl. Don't eat your foot. Good girl. A couple more weeks, and I think she'll start to resemble a oh, fairly yeah. normal looking I think we'll dog. We'll really start to see a difference by then. I mean, when I first picked up Snoopy, I really did think she wasn't going to survive. So it's brilliant to see her today looking as she does. And I'm really hopeful that she's going to carry on improving and that she's going to end up in a fabulous home at the end of it. OK, who put that on her? <laughs> Snoopy's a survivor and she deserves her happy ever after. Find out if she gets it later. You remember Sam? Hello, Sam. Also coming up, we check in on Sam and Lexi, the two dogs left home alone. She is very vocal in her kennel and she does pan and pace around. But as soon as she has someone there with her, she's absolutely fine. Earlier, we met an eight-year-old staffie called Lexi, rescued after being abandoned in a house with Rottweiler Sam. Lexi, calm down. Lexi's been at South Godston Animal Centre for nine days now, but she's finding it hard to settle. So care assistant Lily Gallup has a plan to help her chill out. So I like to bring more stressed dogs into the middle of the field um, when it's quiet and just sit with them, and just talk to them nicely and calmly, and especially for Lexi. It will really benefit her just to calm down a little bit out of the kennel. The results of Lexi's ear swabs showed she had an infection and needs ear drops, which are much easier to give while she's relaxed. Oh, is that nice? Do you like the feel of that? Ooh. Not sure if that was a yes or no. Thankfully, her ears aren't causing her pain anymore. Come on, then. She's full of energy. And today, Anthony Pulfer's back at the rescue centre where he started his career to check in on her. Hi, Lily. Hello. Hello, Lexi. Are you on your daily walk? She's having time off leave now. <laughs> she's a little bit more confident than I saw yeah. the other day. Yeah. How's she getting on, all right? Yeah, she's, um, she's doing well. Um, it's just... The case of being in kennels, she does find a little bit stressful and she does pan and pace around. But as soon as she has someone there with her, she's absolutely fine. She's a brilliant dog, um, out walking, meeting other dogs, playing in the off-lead compound with balls and toys. You're so friendly, aren't you? Good girl. Where's your ball? Go get your ball. Go get your ball. Go, Go get your ball. She'll get her home in, in no time, though. Yeah. She'll, as soon as we've assessed her and her ears are sorted out, she'll go fast, because she's a really great dog. And she's got a trick or two up her sleeve. Do you know Paul? Good girl. So cute. This Paul? Good girl. She's a clever little girl, aren't you? Bless her. Lexi's getting more relaxed every day. So how's her fellow rescuee, Rotty Sam, doing? Well, he's also having a bit of trouble adapting to kennel life. You remember Sam? Hello, Sam. How you doing? All right? Yeah, he's not bad. Oh, he's nice and happy. We're just about to take him for a walk around the fields because he hasn't been out yet today. All right, let's go um, say hello. Yep. Boy. Unlike sociable Lexi, Sam is very shy until he gets to know people, so he needs bringing out of his shell. When he first arrived, he was much more reserved. Um, so we were taking it easy with ha the amount of handling we were giving him, but we've been spending time with him each day, taking him out and taking it at his pace, seeing how it goes. And he's so much better today than he was yesterday. So it's everyday improvement I'm yeah. seeing with him. Sam still needs to have treatment for his teeth, and there are growths on his body that need investigation. Yeah, come on, buddy. Good boy. But as he and Lexi have both now been signed over by their owner, they'll soon be able to find new homes. Got a bit of energy, isn't he? 
It's been a real pleasure to pop down to the Animal Centre today to see uh, Lexi and Sam. Good boy. She's really happy today. Today just shows how dogs thrive off just good care, you know, good interaction with people. Good girl. Always a good girl, Kevin. From here on, Lexi and Sam now can be assessed and hopefully find new homes. Fingers crossed for both these gentle dogs. But now to another who's also looking for her happy ending. Almost two months ago, Snoopy the Lurcher was found lying by a road, so thin she was close to death. John and Hazel, who stopped their car to rescue her, haven't been able to forget her. Hello. Yes. There. There. there isn't it? Hey, you've come Where's that wagging tail today, then? Yeah. Hey. They've been visiting her at Laybourne Animal Centre nearly every day while she recovers, with the help of kennel supervisor Jane Pook. The family have been down to see Snoopy lots now. They try and come as often as they can. To be honest, we didn't know whether she was going to even survive. Poor thing. No. But it's so nice to see her. They've even brought their grandchildren along. The couple haven't had pets for the past nine years since they lost their two beloved boxer dogs. But that's all about to change. They've made the big decision to take Snoopy home for good. Yes. Mm -hmm. Will be, won't I? When she comes home. Look at that. They obviously love her. The fact that they bothered to rescue her and even stop in the first place, a lot of people wouldn't have done that. And today is the day Snoopy gets her fairy tale ending. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. Come on, come on in. There's a good girl. There's a good girl, ain't you? She's now reached a healthy weight and is ready to start a whole new life. Once the paperwork is signed, of course. Brilliant. Right, that's all your pack done. That's everything done for Snoopy then. She's all yours now. Thank you very much. No worries. We're, we're going to call her Lily. OK, yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Oh, that's a lovely game. Definitely suits her. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's just time for a goodbye photo to remember her by for Simon and the team who helped newly named Lily back to health. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, we're off. <laughs> That's it. It's hard to believe it's only been seven weeks since John Hazel and her sister Maureen stopped their car for Lily and saved her life. Once she's home, Lily seems keen to explore her new surroundings. Good girl. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, shall I let you go? Do you want to have a look now? And you can go and look. There. She's got quite a bit of garden out there to run in. Come on. Good girl. <laughs> she said, no, I'm not coming in there. It's a bit strange, I expect, isn't it, coming inside? Yeah. Mm, she doesn't seem to be too bothered no, about anything. No, she's not too pestered, is she? Inside, Lily finds the most important room. Ah. I say, miss, down. <laughs> Good girl. Oh, look at that. John? Looks as if it's starting to feel like home. You know, we've just a little bit of patience with them, and it's surprising how it does pay off. Yeah, it's a good girl, aren't you? You are. But before she gets too comfy, she needs to finish the grand tour. What's in here? Is that another dog? What's that? That's Henry. He don't do anything but sleep. <laughs> Oh, she's found the other bed. Am I under the stairs like Harry Potter? It'd be interesting to see, like, when her character really comes out, just see what she's really like. I mean, she's very friendly, she's very gentle. But, uh, I expect there's a bit of mischief in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice bed, isn't it? Really nice to see her here at last. We've waited quite a few weeks, and she was so poorly. We didn't know whether, the, you know, we would get to this day, really. It was fortunate all round for her and for us that we came along. Hopefully, you know, she'll settle down and become one of the family. Will you? Looks like she's almost there already. Good on you, Lily. Earlier, we met anxious Sam, a dog with rotten teeth and bad breath. 
this 10-year-old Rotty has a couple of health issues that need addressing. Oh, smell. <coughs> oh. Today, vet Chris Dawson will begin by taking out the rotten teeth that are the cause of his bad breath. That's vile. <laughs> He'll also be removing a variety of lumps and bumps from Sam's body. There's a number of lumps uh, uh, in the um, area here that need to be uh, removed and analysed to make sure that they're not cancerous. That's quite an unusual set of lumps. In the operating theatre, vet Chris starts the procedure with the growths that are easiest to get at. We're going to take off the big ones um, and biopsy one of the small red ones. These are likely to get damaged or traumatised uh, because they're sticking out so far, so it's best to get rid of those. These lumps are relatively easy because they're on little stalks. They could be adenomas, which are benign skin tumours, but difficult to say just by looking at them. The most serious end would be a form of carcinoma, um, which would be highly dangerous. The mystery lumps will be sent to a lab for a biopsy, as will the larger fatty lump, which is next to be removed. I'm now looking away because I am squeamish. There's a slightly larger lump, it's in the skin, so we can't take a small, it's not on a little pedicle. So we'll have to do a much larger incision to make sure we get all the borders of it. It's just in the skin, um, and it's very mobile. And a lot of people say, oh, if it's in the skin and it's mobile, you don't need to worry about them. But some of the most serious cancers we see, and the common ones we see, are mobile and in the skin and not painful. With the lumps done, it's on to Sam's teeth. Unfortunately, a lot of these teeth are damaged and are going to need to be removed. The procedure is being done in the prep room so any infection doesn't contaminate the sterile operating theatre. These, fortunately, from removing them point of view, are quite rotten, which means they will come out. If that was a healthy tooth, you'd be looking at half an hour, 40 minutes just to do that. It looks like we're going to be losing at least 10 or 12 teeth, maybe more. And be warned, it's not going to be pretty. Poor Sam will have to lose all four of his biggest teeth, the canines, also known as dog teeth, or in humans, eye teeth. The canine, obviously the big one, has one very large root and can be quite difficult to remove. But not in this case. Oh, yuck. That reminds me. I must get some floss. Oh. The soon-to-be canine-free canine will be fine without them. Because it's better to have fewer non-painful teeth than lots of painful teeth. With a total of 13 teeth eventually extracted, Sam's now been under anaesthetic for almost three hours. He just needs a scale and polish, and he's done. Should be in a lot less pain now. Uh, it'll take a few days for it to settle down. Um, so the first couple of days we'll be on painkillers. And then after that, things should start improving. You'll also need antibiotics to clear up any remaining infection. And it's just a matter of waiting to hear about those lumps from the lab. We'll find out the results later. Good luck, mate. So we've just seen how bad teeth can get, but how do you stop it from getting to that stage? Well, vet Imogen Moore is going to give me some advice on doggy dental care. So, Imogen, tell me about doggy teeth okay. and how to look after them. So, it's really important to look after our dog's teeth, um, especially a dog like Bertie, who has a slightly shorter face. It often means that he's still got the same number of adult teeth, but all squashed into a smaller space. Um, so you've got to make sure we have a look at them every day if we can. Fold back the lip and you can actually have a look at the teeth. You can see that they've got a little um, tartar starting to build up, um, the sort of greyish colouring on the top of the teeth there, yeah. and the sort of redness around the gum line. 
So that's the sort of thing you want to really keep an eye out for. So you have to do something, right? Yes, we're going to brush Bertie's teeth. OK. So any toothbrush is fine. Really important, don't use human toothpaste. Right. They hate mint, but it also contains fluoride, which is bad for them. So do get a doggy toothpaste, which is flavoured in all sorts. We've got chicken, we've got uh, liver, we've got fish, so they should really enjoy it. <laughs> Yeah. Fish flavoured toothpaste. Oh, this is liver flavour. Oh, yeah. that's charming. Right. So, we'll just ask him to raise his head a little Pretty, bit. Pretty, where's your mouth? Good boy. Just start at the front and just sort of little rotation. You can do any sort of action just to get a movement. And you want to make sure you go along the actual tooth and the gum line, because that's the sort of area, the gum line where it meets the tooth is where the plaque sits mostly. Well done, Bertie. Rinse what does that taste like? What does that bit. taste like? He oh. likes it. And so I suppose the ultimate goal in time is for the dog to brush its own teeth. Now, if he could do that, we wouldn't need to do it at all. Brush. <laughs> brush. Brush your teeth. It's just, it's early, it's early days. Well, yeah, working on it. <laughs> Coming up. It's a house of horrors in there. We catch up with Woody, who was saved by Inspector Anthony Joins. Come on, you're not going back in there. You're never going back in there, buddy. Trust me. And if your home is just crying out for a rescue dog, we could have the one for you. There's no response. I think we'll just force entry. Right. Last year, Inspector Anthony Joins removed four injured dogs from an uncooperative owner. Next time, I'll throw the dogs at you. All right. It's a house of horrors in there. It's just unbelievable. One of them was a scared but friendly little chap called Woody. Come on, you're not going back in there. You're never going back in there, buddy. Trust me. Woody was safe, but he had a serious leg injury. He's really swollen around the hock. To try and prevent amputation, he needed surgery. <laughs> no pressure. Three pins were put into his knee joint, but it wasn't straightforward. The infection that came out of the joint is a bit worrying. When you put metal implants into anything with infection, there's a worry that antibiotics won't treat the infection. So, did Woody manage to keep his leg? A year on, and he's still very much a four-legged friend. And he's found a loving new owner, Teresa Heward. Well, when we first got him, he limped quite a bit on his leg, but it had healed well. His leg doesn't seem to bother him at all now. He jumps about quite normally with us. Woody's personality has really come on over the past few months. He enjoys being sense of attention. He's just really nosy and wants to know everything that's going on. And there's nothing he likes more than a windy old British beach. Woody really enjoys being down here because he loves all the different smells and seeing all the different people. Well, there's one person who I'm sure he'd love to see again. The inspector who rescued him, Anthony Joins. Woody! Yes, I would. Hey, buddy. Yes, Come and say hello. Hey, how are you doing? It's such a pleasure to see him being, being loved properly. And the way he goes up to people is amazing, then, isn't it? It's a testament to these type of dogs, and dogs in general, that they're, they're very forgiving animals, you know? Um, and if you show them the right sort of care, they'll, you know, lie on a wet floor on a wet, cold, you know, a wet, windy day in New Brighton. But it is a real pleasure to see him. So good to see you, mate. Looks like the feeling's mutual. <laughs> Since he's been rehomed, there's one big difference in Woody. It's really a pleasure for me to see him being loved. He's probably being loved a little bit too much, waste-wise. I got told off by the vet not <laughs> you to got give told him off by the vet. You want to slim him down a little bit, You're treating him a little bit too well. Oh, my goodness. Who could resist that belly, though, eh? You'll have me here all day, wouldn't you? You'd have me here all day, you would, wouldn't you, bud? All right, mate. See you later. Right. Thanks for taking nice him on. To see really you. nice to see you too. Well done. Take care, bud. See you later. Right, I'm off. Take care. Bye.
the amount of things he's been through, that poor dog. We had pins in his leg and all sorts. So to see him now enjoying the beach and just being outside and with his new owner is, is really, really rewarding. This is the end of, you know, the rainbow. You get to come back and see them living like that. It's absolutely superb. So, yeah, absolute highlight of the day. It's a great result for Anthony and Woody, whose original owner was banned from keeping animals for 10 years. But what's the latest news on pup Rocco? The little chap is now back to full health, and it's no surprise that he's already found himself a new home, as well as a new name, Oscar. Come on, Sam. Good boy. <laughs> and as for Sam and Lexi, sadly, Sam's lab results tested positive for cancer. But the good news is he'll be well looked after by Pauline Griffiths, one of the charity's volunteers who has adopted him. And Staffy Lexi has found a new loving home too with the Brennan family. As you've seen in the programme, many rescue dogs don't have the best start in life, but that doesn't mean that they can't make incredible pets. The RSPCA care for thousands of them, and there's often lots of work that needs to be done to get them ready for rehoming. And here's just one of the wonderful dogs they've been looking after. Hello, Layla. Good girl. Oh, it's exciting. You're coming out. Let's go then, Layla. This is Layla, our three-year-old lurcher. She's been here at Ashley Heath for six months. Come on then, puppet. Layla wears a muzzle when she's out and about because she's a lurcher and likes us to chase small animals. This isn't because she's aggressive to people or other dogs. It's just a precaution. Come on then, Layla. If I could describe Layla in three words, it would be loyal, fast, and independent. She's coped quite well into the kennels, but she's missed out on a lot of home life. Layla, ready? Catch! Good girl! Layla is looking for a family with older children, with no small animals, but she can be rehomed with a suitable matched dog. Layla, over! Good girl, over! Good girl! Layla's definitely become one of my favourites. Hey, Layla. Layla's such a lovely girl. Good. She's just waiting for the right family to come along to take her home. So, if you're looking for a four-legged best friend in your life, remember to make your local rescue centre your first stop, where you'll find plenty of deserving candidates desperate to brighten up your home. Next time on The Dog Rescuers. Come on, Missy. Inspector Chris Walker saves one of the most matted dogs we've ever seen. She's absolutely no idea where she is. She can't see. We've not even any idea what that kind of dog it is. You're so beautiful, aren't you? Two loving dogs kept in grim conditions. Can their owner clean up her act? Shouldn't have to live like that, should you, babies? And it's crunch time for rescued Spaniel Ted as he faces the final test in his sniffer dog training. This is the moment. Fresh is on. But does he really have what it takes? He's not remotely focused on. I've never, ever seen him like this. 